Hello, 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 everybody. I'm just getting set up here. Back in action. Um, Maceo Paisley here um, with Create California. About to give you guys all the good information. Um, we're going to talk with, a, with an amazing individual today. Um, someone I, I don't know that well, but I follow their career in the past couple of years and I really been inspired by the, the things they're putting out, the content they're doing, um, and someone I, I really consider a colleague in the field of, of curation. Um, for those of you all that are, that are not familiar, um, we'll go ahead and get you acquainted. It looks like uh, Tyree just joined, so that's going to be awesome, and we'll have him. Little tech, little tech situation as always. You know, there's a little hiccup. Um, I see you there. I'm trying to get this tech thing going while we, while we, while we pull things together. And as soon as everybody's on board, there we go. There we go. My man. Man himself, how you doing? I'm doing amazing. <laughs> that's great that's despite great. despite circumstances yeah how, no, are, I mean, how are you hey, bro perseverance is part of the part of the game yeah man it's good to you see know? you it's good to it's see good you to see you too yeah man how are you doing in this heat wave man uh my one fan is doing the job <laughs> oh really say. okay it, it, it's like right here no and it's a baby fan though Maceo. it's not a, it's not that big man. <laughs> i got i got a fan <laughs> I got a fan aiming right at me as well. This is my last radio. That's cool. Good to That's see cool. you, man. Are you, are you out here? Are you out in LA? I, at the moment, I'm in Detroit, Michigan. Okay. 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 How is so, it treating you? It, um, many different ways, you know. Um, I came out here for the curatorial fellowship. <laughs> right, at, right, right. I'm a Museum of Contemporary Art, and they, yeah. um, you know, had their own sort of reckoning there, which I was a part of. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now we're we're working to, you know, bring it back home, bring bring the museum yeah. to the people. Yeah, um, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I wanna I wanna dive in with you here. I'm so excited sure. for this conversation. Same man. Um, my name, you know, for those that are just joining, my name is Maceo, one of the Create California ambassadors, and Create California is an initiative to help bring awareness to the importance of arts education for California's youth. Now we have a mandate already in place that all the public schools in California get to have arts education, but even before uh, COVID, only 12% of California schools were meeting that. Um, and so part of the, what the initiative is, is these creative conversations, these create conversations, um, mm -hmm. where I'm speaking to different people who I admire, who I know um, arts is deeply impactful in their life, but they may not be practicing studio artists. They either work in the creative ecosystem mm. or they're just generally creative thinkers. Mm. And you're one person who I uh, was saying before you hopped on, I really mm. admire the, the things you stand for and what you put out there, but also see you as Vice a versa. colleague. Vice versa. You know? Vice versa. Vice versa. <laughs> yeah. And, and see you as a colleague, as a curator, um, and somebody who really has a, has a mind for understanding larger systems at play. And um, you know, one of, one of California's own, represent. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, why don't you give us just a little bit of your introductory background, tell us what your practice is stemming around these days sure. and, sure, and sure, how, sure. You're, how you're coming to the conversation. Yeah, sure. Um, I come to the conversation with a lot of gratitude. Uh, and you can hear me, right? I hope you can. Absolutely. The fan is on. Cool, cool. Um, I come to the conversation with gratitude. Um, and I'm a Los Angeles-based museum curator, historian, and public speaker, activist, you know, the like. And uh, these days, I've been involved and invested in a lot of grassroots conversations that um, have allowed me to kind of shore up the creative side of things. 
um, so that uh, the conversation about the authenticity of blackness and the history surrounding it is told intersectionally, but also like um, uh, objectively, like, you know, <laughs> uh, and, and I'll talk more about like the subjectivity, objectivity of the conversation. Um, but in this moment, it's very exciting. And uh, my practice is dealing with the intersections thereof. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. um, so when you think about history, mm -hmm. do you think that that is a creative subject? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you just want to. Because I know you can handle it. I know you can yeah, you know, gladly, gladly, gladly. Because a lot oh. of people think about history and they, oh, I don't like history, this yeah, and that, and yeah. the other thing. But you know, w your perspective, you know, sure. on it. Sure, man. You you know, uh, just to start out this conversation at the base level, I just want to give a preface to, to anyone who knows or doesn't know me, but is introducing themselves to my practice. Um, I I I failed history class in in K through 12, right? Like I was not, I was not the history kid. I was not a historian. I was not this, 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 this dude. But what I think a lot of uh, young people, black young people in particular have is like this, this alternate education, like this black political education we get it from the home. So we probably all get PhDs just from our <laughs> parents and their proximity to the black power movement, right? Um, and so, so considerate of my introduction to blackness and having seen history presented in an aesthetic way from my mother, my grandmother, I've, I've never been able to divorce creativity and history because they've always been wedded. Uh, so when you come into more formal settings, institutional settings, you see that it's a lot more dust on the history yes. <laughs> of other yes. people where you only have seen vibrant, like vibrant, vibrant colors and, and stuff like that. So yeah. I bring what I brought, what I was given to the, to, uh, to the practice. So it's, it's not so much that history is all the things that happen, no. but history is a part of what we're doing as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Never a divorcing of the past from the present. So how Never. do you, what's your, what's your approach to um, being a historian right now? How do you, if you're talking to a classroom full of, sure. full of young people, um, how, how are they gonna make, how do you make a, a distinction between, you know, hey, this dusty book that, you know, Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> so-and-so is making you read and, you know, you know, what you do for a living or how you see your role in, in, the, in the ecosystem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, the question is, how do I present it differently? I'm, I'm sorry, I just wanna catch up. Yeah, yeah, how, do you, how sure. do you see your, how do you make sense of your contribution, your professional contribution? Yeah. Sorry, about, sorry about Los Angeles in the background. Um, I make, <laughs> I make sense of my contribution to the field, to uh, anyone who's walking in, by saying that it's always belonged to you, right? Like the history that you didn't learn, the history you do learn, the history you don't um, have a grasp of yet, it's always had you at the center. The problem is, is that the people who were writing it never centered you. Uh, so how do you actively reclaim those narratives um, mm -hmm. that center your community, your background, your heritage, your elders, your ancestors, and then your children, right? And I have this unique opportunity right now, this window, where I've been taking full advantage of that, man. Like, what, is it, what does it look like to have um, and be a gatekeeper, but, and, like, and like not keep people out, but instead bring people in? Right. Yeah. People okay. who history hasn't included ever, right? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? There is this, um, that's one of the ways that um, I think power, power is con controlled and, 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 mm -hmm. and kept over here by, by, bank, by saying, hey, this is not for you. Yep. You don't get to play in this area. Or right. in some ways, making it seem as though it's not, it's not enjoyable. It's not an yes. enjoyable thing to practice or be a part of. Right. Um, but it seems to me that you have so much fun doing, doing your work. <laughs> well, I have to. My, my, Macy, my, my attention span, like many others, maybe people who are on this uh, live with this, my attention span is short, man. I have, I, I used to be able to sit and read full books in one sitting. Now it's like audio books and, you know, while I'm multitasking and doing dishes, you know, um, but history uh, my curatorial practice uh, in the last two museums I've been working with is uh, always has this as the benchmark for the, for any exhibition I do. If it doesn't catch you in the first 15 seconds, um, I lost you. Like I lost you. 
And so if I don't hit you, your attention with something as large as a police car or um, a, a huge uh, printing press from the 1900s, um, yeah. you know, with, with exhibitions with Ari Ann Edmonds. Yeah, um, shout, out, shout out. Yeah, to shout out to Ari. Project, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, if I don't catch you in the first 15 seconds, um, you, your, your attention span has already left the room and you're going to follow your mind. So um, I just got to get you, got to get you. So one of the things that you're talking about is um, communication sure. and engagement. And in, so in that way, part of your practice is as much a producer as it is the historical element as well, right? Not just Absolutely. these are the facts, Absolutely. but this is, this is engagement and this is a, and this is, um, a story as, along with it. Absolutely. So this Absolutely. is the part that I want to actually ask you about, sure. which has to do with the subjectivity, objectivity piece. Sure. How sure. do you go about presenting a perspective, a real uh -huh. perspective, sure. and also be true to, you know, the historic, you know, the narrative? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, it's not, actually... Not, like, not even in theory, but like, I how do you go about doing it? Uh, yeah, no, 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 I understand. Um, I do so very simply. Um, it's doing the reverse of what American history has always done, right? So if Black people, okay, so you have American slavery and you have the, the history centering this enslaver, Thomas Jefferson, any president, any founding father, right? But then on the, on the fringes of that history, it's all the slaves we didn't learn about. <laughs> it's, it's all the land that they stole from the Indians that they, excuse me, the Native Americans that they uh, um, uh, drove out of their, you know, their own lands. And then I just do the exact opposite. Like, what does it look like to center Sally Hemings? What does it look like to center Takajuia? What does it look like to center even Pocahontas, right? Irrespective of the Disneyfication of yep. her story, right? Like, in, in doing that usurps uh, the colonial lens that we traditionally have about American history. But also what it does is free up the subjectivity lens that we had of those, those figures and then... Um, gives them an objective uh, um, excuse me it gives them a subjectivity where they were just seen as objects i'm sorry yeah I'm, yeah i'm looking at my objectivity incorrectly right. and, and and that's what i do man um and and it's a it's a very intentional way of decolonizing history but also upending this construct of whiteness and its lens on um our histories as people of color right so you're not saying hey look at this thing that is a story about somebody no and as opposed to here is here is our stories told from our own voice, Absolutely. and now you, young person, you get to be a part of that. You're creating yeah. that. You're, you're now you're a part of a lineage. Absolutely, a long standing lineage. Things that yep. happen to you, these are happening. <laughs> you know this through you, through, through you. All right, all right. Okay, okay. So how did you get? You know, walk me through your a little bit of your personal history. Our, what what yeah, kind man. of kid were you? What subjects did you love in school? Sure, sure, sure. And how did that affect where you ended up or sure, where sure. you are now? I want to sure, sure, sure. Um, born and raised here in Los Angeles, Section 8 housing, single parent home, grandmother raised me. Um, a descendant of mass, the era of mass incarceration, war on drugs, right? Um, and that fallout you know, singularly had an impact on the ways in which I was sought to express myself. And so my grandmother, at a very young age, put me in performing arts classes um, where I was doing um, dance and theater and, you know, what, and art, wherever I could get my hands on. And that's, from a very young age, was my ability to use my hands, my feet, where my voice was trying to catch up. Um, mm. Fast forward to that, man. Um, dedicated my life to theater, in fact. Like, I wanted to be a thespian. Um, competed in a few Shakespeare festivals. You know, okay. that's all. That, that, that's okay. all. That's all you see them, you too. <laughs> I'm going to go back. No, my, and, and my man, my man uh, who jumped in the chat, I don't know if he's still in, my man Romel, uh, him and I competed in the American College Theater, theater Festival for a play we did in college. And we got to the semifinals. So, you know, I didn't play about this, right? Like, I didn't, I didn't play right. about this this performing arts lens. But um, I soon grew disenchanted with the theater world. Um, I, I, grew, I grew disenchanted because of the racial um, conversations about theater and how I could only play the black guy or, and or the tree. Um, <laughs> and I, and I was Real. over that, right? Um, and then I used the fervor to try to do my best to revisit and relook at the stories which history told about who those subjects would be in um, 
in, in those plays, in those larger stories, right? So th threw myself into uh, academia, McNair Scholar, uh, went to Temple University, got my master's in Africana Studies after that, uh, moved back to LA, professor of Africana Studies at Dominguez Hills, then leveraged that into going to wanting to curate exhibitions about Black history in the American West at CAM. Now I'm at the Autry Museum. And all of that, all of that it informs my curatorial lens about who's in the stories, who's not in the stories, and who needs to be seen uh, and centered in them. So if overall. I could just help, help people draw a connection. Sure, what sure. What I heard was, here's a young person who had not necessarily all of the accoutrement that the world might want to put in front of them, but was given the opportunity to learn their voice, express themselves, yeah. and develop yeah. agency through the arts, through performing Absolutely. arts. Yep. I also heard you learned how to communicate yep. and how to, how, to, how to be in touch with your emotions, and yeah. then um, found that you were deeply interested in narratives, yeah. but didn't always find a place for yourself in those narratives. And so mm -hmm. now you're creating narratives and, and, and reappropriating uh, institutional infrastructure to help make sure that right. those narr like young people are not uh, feeling lost. Man, like, like, you, I <laughs> like, like I did, like I did. Right, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so let me, let me ask you this. When you yeah. were doing the um, Shakespeare and the yeah. acting, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, that's a lot of reading. Yeah. That's yeah. literally literature. <laughs> as I right. Know, right? Right. And, and, and so while you were quote unquote playing, yeah. which is the literal, you yeah, were yeah, also yeah. <laughs> polishing up your, edu your English and your absolutely. language arts. You're right. reading comprehension because in order to act, you have right. to really not only comprehend but embody. Right, fully. That's deep. I think. Yeah, man. I think as far as the campaign is concerned, yeah, we we like to think that the way you teach kids how to read is mm -hmm. by sitting them and teaching them how to read. When right. one of the one of the greatest ways that we learn how to read and write and comprehend is through poetry, performing arts. Right. And, and, and we find that it's happening at this really organic level because you're passionate about understanding the material. Mm -hmm. um, what's, what's one of your favorite um, you know, pieces or roles that you come across? Man, in my-, in my Past, present, in my... future. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That I've done or just in general? That you've done. Oh, man, Sheesh. Oh, man. Um, so I was, <laughs> I, I haven't talked about this in years, bro. Uh, I was the lead of my sophomore year, maybe junior year play of, um, man, what was that play called, man? Um, man, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say anything because I, I, I was a lead in a few of my plays. Um, I actually played this character by the name of Juan Julian, who was like a, a, a Cuban, a Cuban lector, like a Cuban teacher yeah. who came back to uh to 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 read Anna Karenina to his um to his cigar factory right like and and this name of the play escapes me but I, I mean I was doing this uh in my in my uh, sophomore co year of college but I was also Mister in high school I was Mister Lies and Angels in America um mm -hmm. you know <laughs> you know like I was I was not playing when it came to theater and man, you couldn't have told me that I wasn't gonna be the next, like, John, what's, it, what's Denzel Washington's son's name? David John, David yeah. Washington. <laughs> are you, are you, who, are you, who are you liking? Um, These days? I don't want to digress, but I also yeah, want, yeah. I want people to get an understanding of who you are as a person. Who, yeah. are, who are you liking right now in the world of film or and or theater uh, at the moment? Uh, John, John David Washington is, uh, is, is scary good. Um, I like Daniel Kalua. Kalua. Yep. Um, he's, he's, Lakeith is also really masterful. Um, but then, you know, I, I like visiting like old race films from the early 1900s and watching those movies. So anything by Oscar Micheaux, like the Homestead, they're the Homestead. Um, yeah, like I, I, I like, even though those are silent films, I think yeah. their performances are really powerful. So I visit those. I, visit those. I think that's something uh, really interesting when you bring up those older films because yeah you know, there is a really deep connection between the mm -hmm. historical erasure of black folk mm -hmm. in general, sure. and then also like how the media sure. used like black bodies without sort of acknowledgement, you know, of course. Mean, like early film, of course. the roles they were, not only the roles they were cast, but yeah. also how 
um, in early, early film, there, there were some of the, many of the special effects were done by people with black fabric. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like how darker, right. you know, right. uh, not even just the racial connotations, sure. but like how blackness as a technology was used yeah. in relationship yeah. to light. Yeah. But yeah, I think yeah, yeah. the thing here for me is that mm. when it comes to critical thinking and being able to take swaths of information, diverse yeah. uh, thinking, Mm -hmm. systems thinking um as a curator that's your that's pretty much your your job yeah you know what I mean? yeah 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 so when I, oh, yeah please, go ahead I, I was just saying like uh, oh no 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 i agree um and, and and you and you know this all too well as a curator yourself right like we our jobs as a curators beyond just like being custodians of particular collections that we have an expertise in uh we are like stewards and guardians of that information that goes out about the context of those objects. And we know that traditionally white folks um, and white history has only told those stories from a particular lens. And our jobs as black men, black curators is we reclaim the narratives about those who are on the fringes of those stories altogether. Yes. Um, and and, and it's it just, it's really hella fun to, to, to like, to, to usurp and upend whiteness in the ways in which it sees itself. And I don't yeah. think we have enough conversations about how even the, 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 the narrative structure, the story structure that we were told in K through 12 um, was, the, was the universal, right? Like, right, you, we're, we're, if, told, we're told that because this is canonical, exactly. it's also the only one that exists. Exactly. And, and any one... approaches to narrative and storytelling um, that doesn't center like the, the protagonist, the antagonist, like that arc, then it is seen as primitive, right? Yeah. But, yeah. but, but we, we know, like, And tie know. that, funnily enough, tie that to monotheism, tie that, right? Hello, hello. Like centering a singular figure in a narrative hello? that like goes through history. Hello. We look at, we look at storytelling in a different <laughs> way. We say, oh, everybody is a subject. Right. And you can tell a story with five people and then right. there's five different stories and now you're, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I think that um, one of the things that you're saying is that as we start to look at ourselves differently, we give permission, not only for others to look at us differently, we help them see us the way we want to be seen, but right. we give them permission to see themselves differently. As absolutely, well. absolutely. I was, uh, I, I was in an interview recently um, with Jeffrey Canada and we were talking about, um, we were just talking about how like uh, Carter G. Woodson's The Miseducation of the Negroes thesis is that black people um, are miseducated about themselves. But an, mm -hmm. a, 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 a smaller point underneath that thesis is that just as much as black folks don't know about themselves because of their miseducation, white folks don't know anything about themselves because they have no right. understanding of our history either. And right. so it, it, it's, it, we, you and I come from this long legacy um, from Carter G. Woodson to, to Delilah Beasley, you know, all of these black historians across time who effectively weren't trying to do anything new. They were just reclaiming what was stolen altogether. And like, a comprehensive we're doing. story. Of absolutely. What absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and, think, and dear um, brother, hold, I, I just want to give you context. I'm sorry. I have my, my iPad is on 10. So if it dies, I will. I just want to give everyone a heads up. I'm calling oh, you on okay. my iPhone. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, all good. I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, if if you hop off, I yeah. will put on some music. <laughs> sure, um, sure, actually, sure. you know what? I'll take a quick side because sure. you know this is IG Live. They gave me the mic. They don't. You know, I don't know if they knew what they were doing. But... <laughs> they did. They did. They did. <laughs> uh, tell me about sure. your what I see as an emerging practice, but you're yeah. DJing and how yeah. that comes in contact with like how you think about things. Man, you know what? I, you know, cause it's IG Live, I can move my camera. So, <laughs> um, but for me, man, I, so as, a, as someone who loves music uh, yeah. so much, um, I've been collecting vinyl records for the last like, what is it? Last two years, three years, because it's just, it's just my love language, but it's also a part of black archival collecting for me. Um, so recently I copped my DJ Serato, SBJ, you know, and I've been going to work on it, man. And, and what it's allowed me to do and what I, why I picked it up really, man, is for my curatorial practice. Because yeah. I realized that what I'm doing 
so effectively in the museum world is like connecting stories. But I learned our history from our music. So me bringing, <laughs> me, me, me focusing on DJing is actually revisiting the origins of my curatorial process. I mean, when, one of my favorite right. historians, contemporary historians is Questlove. Of, of course. <laughs> it's like, he's like telling the story of right. America, of right. Black America, right. almost like through music. He's, through music. You know? Yeah. So yeah, I, uh, so so that's that's my that's my love, my heart, and it's a part of my curatorial practice. Yeah, I was music. just on a chat the other day about um, about '90s R&B. Yeah, and it, was, it it became impossible to talk about the music without talking about what was happening in the world at the time. Right, you can't even right? you can't divorce them. You can't, you can't divorce them. Nope. And and there is an there is that's the other piece of it is that black music has inherent <laughs> political undertones. And, polit and, and inherent political history in it, too. Yeah, and political overtones. As well. Overto overtone, definitely overtone. Yeah, so, so this, is, this is fascinating to me. Yeah, I'm man. just finding out there's these, I forget their names, but they're these kids on huh. YouTube yeah. Yeah. that they do the first listen to old school jams. Right, right. And, and they, they did recently the Phil Collins. The Phil yes. Collins joint. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yes, I, I love that, too, because too. it shows one of the ones they just did a, a couple months ago was um, Fuji's, <laughs> and it was like, it, it never occurred to me that, oh yeah, right. if you're 19, right. you were not alive. No, when man. When no. the score came out, you were no. still not alive. So you no. do have to go back in here. Yeah. That is actually history lesson. So to me, what I'm thinking of, why, why are we teaching history? It's like Columbus yeah. came, you know, 1492, <laughs> sell the ocean blue. Right. And I'm like, there's a whole other, you can teach history through food. You can teach history through music. Right. You know what I mean? Right, right. And, and I'm glad you bring that up, man, because I was actually thinking about that in relationship to Pharrell and Jay-Z yesterday, because this week marks the 17 year anniversary of the album Clones, but also front for the song Frontin. Mm. And you and I love, I'm sure you love Frontin like I love Frontin. Oh, yeah. Um, but but it, even that song, it's like seventeen years old. That's a full teenager, bro. Like that's a it's fully, a, yeah. That's a fully formed. They have teenager. the whole mind. Though. The whole mind, and you're like, yo, like there's some, there's some kids who've never heard Frontin, or like they're gonna find out about Frontin this week, and you're like, yeah. Wait, what? Or what? That they, like, how were you able to develop a consciousness without that? Song? <laughs> without that song, and and when they and when they make their YouTube video, but like first listen. Front end. They're gonna be like, they're gonna do the same thing we all did when we heard um, yep. th that song uh, back in 17 years ago. Yep. Um, but also um, hearing Pharrell's voice for the first time, right? And like, yeah. like that falsetto, you know, all in all. And, and all this all. is this is for me again yep. going back to the history piece. Is that same thing happened with me and Quincy? Right. I'm like, wait, <laughs> Quincy, Quincy Jones. That's why he's big because of right. Because not not just because of right, Mike's right. almost entire catalog, right? <laughs> but but because of he worked with Ray Charles. He, right. you know, like all the people. Uh, who else? Um, uh, um, ah, come on, Frank Sinatra. How can I forget? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so when you think of like when I think of Quincy, yeah, for for me. Yeah, and the, and the previous generation, yeah. and now to see young people listening to Frontin, it's like, <laughs> oh, I get it. Yeah. This person is, there's their name is right. interwoven through right. an entire genre of music, right. not even just genre, a, right, right, right. A, an entire generation of music. Because right, right. You can't, you don't get Britney Spears toxic. No, no. You know what I mean? Without Pharrell? No, no. You know what I mean? And so many other hits, right? Right, so, right, right, right. You and, and, and you can't spell generation without genre either, <laughs> like, right? Yes. Right, the rumor, right? So yeah. it, it, it's it's beautiful. You you bring it up, man, and and I think what growing up black in America has always taught me is that I've um, that I'm I'm seen very uniquely being a, a my weapon of choice in this larger museum world that you probably can identify is that we saw blackness through everything. We saw blackness through. Food. We saw blackness through um, clothing. We saw blackness through our music, the light, right? Like these are appendages that give us context about our experience. But I, it, very uniquely, when you, what I've seen is that whenever I bring that lens into the the the, the Western canon, you know, the Western yep. the Western identity, and I'm saying, well, why don't we just look at the 
the American experience through song, through food, through through hair, through clothing. Yep. They're like, oh, wait, this is groundbreaking. <laughs> who, 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 where did you learn this from? And I'm like, my grandma. And I, you know, and I think that for me, that's sure. that is the gift and the curse of sure. of having a marginalized identity. Absolutely, absolutely. Right? It's that hey, all this stuff, like innovation is just how I roll. Right. This is like part of our culture. Right. It's, certainly if you, if you believe that uh, <laughs> necessity is the mother of invention, then Absolutely. you're talking about a people who are, they have a culture of invention. Completely. Right? So I, I think that, you know, that's like the gift and the curse of carrying a marginalized identity is that we just, that's just like the practice that we're, right. we're always like, how can we flip this? How can we spin this? How right. can we make it do more than what it was presented to us as? How can we take ownership of something that was never designed for us to be a part of? Right. Um, right. And that and that includes like uh, I think museum infrastructure and absolutely. Um, and it, I think it also speaks to how it's so funny the word integration. But I, <laughs> don't don't don't. This is a slippery slope. <laughs> yeah, but how taking that's why I say comprehensive sure. or comprehensive viewpoint. <laughs> You know, um, on history. I don't want to say I was going to say an integrated viewpoint. I know, I'm like, wait. But I was like, I don't want to go there. But a, a comprehensive viewpoint, and it's really just like you do a disservice yeah. to yourself by yeah. slicing off history in this way. Absolutely. Yes, I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> what What is exciting you this week, this month, um, about what you're looking at? in the world or you know just any projects that you're involved in or because yeah, um, i'm going to shout out the, the campaign but i also want to let sure. um this is going to be saved and archived so for anybody sure. who wants to keep an eye out sure sure um thing it's just things that i'm excited about that i'm involved with or just in general in the in the larger ether but yeah I both. Just, oh, okay sure um we'll start out with the ether I, i'm really excited about uh the vanity fair's recent um, we were spread on um, Breonna Taylor and the, the these amazing black voices uh, who Tanahasi Coates and the team of Vanity Fair have edited into a larger package. I think that that is a uh, is something I'm excited to pick up. Um, I'm also really excited about a lot of the great work that um, is Zeal, um, which is an art collective that I'm I'm kind of like attached to. And I yep. know my man Black Star is in here as well. Um, are doing, uh, especially um, Eileen and, and and so many others. Um, I'm excited about um, the, the the shit I'm working on. Like um, I, recently, recently I was uh, selected by Pharrell in particular uh, in, to be included in his Time Magazine package yeah. on the, the new American Revolution, which I'm so humbled by and and, uh, and I'm excited about what's to come from it. Um, I'm also really excited about um, a, a curatorial project I'm doing um, with the Los Angeles Philharmonic that's still kind of in the, in the, in the early stages that's kind of big. Yeah. So, uh, it's, and that's gonna come out in the fall. So, you know, I, I'm just, I'm excited uh, to, uh, with the stuff I'm doing at the Autry Museum with the Collecting Community History Initiative, which is trying to, co is attempting to collect COVID-19 and BLM protests in the West. You know, so I, I, I'm, my hands are in a lot of different places. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm very grateful for um, my partner who, who's on this live, who supports me and, you know, and all of the great people in my community and my network who um, support me as well, as I endeavor on these projects. Awesome, awesome, dope. Yeah, I just wanna make sure that that was known We'll wrap up here and um, yeah, man. you know let let people get back to their lives and let you get back to your lunchtime. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> bro. You know, thank you, you for the opportunity, are you man. Be this with any any more any more DJ uh, <laughs> sessions? No, no, no. Um, I was I was talking to my partner uh, and I was telling her that like um, that uh, twenty uh, summer twenty twenty two. I will. I'll, I'll come at day, it'll be day party season and I'll be like, remix, no more. Okay, you'll be ready at that time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You'll be ready no, at that time. No, no, no time soon, I'm not popping out. I'm, I'm still holding my skills. Okay, 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 cool. Yeah, well, look, uh, for those that are just checking in, my name is Maceo, you're here with Tyree Boy Pates. Boy Thank you, Pates. bro. Yes. Yeah. And 
if you are looking for more information about the Create California campaign, it's a California initiative to make sure that people know arts are essential. It's not optional, um, that our kids need um, arts education for multiple reasons. And if you want to check out why, go to createcalifornia.org. Um, check out Tyree's Instagram if you haven't. Thank you. Um, and then see all the amazing things that he's doing. Um, and you know what? It, this is a pleasure. And I you too, bro. That. I love that I get to make an excuse to, to catch up with you on a, on a, on a, on a positive me, effort. Me um, too. And, and, and congratulations on all the work you're doing. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to tell everybody to follow you and all of the, the, the amazing work that you've always been a part of, from News 2s to, to this, to, um, to all the things you secretly have your hands in. Yep. You've really been, uh, I just want to give you big, uh, big props because not only have you inspired me, but you have always been a vanguard and on the right side of history, making sure that these spaces are inclusive for people like me. So I would not yep. be able to do Absolutely. nor have in my hand if you weren't the template. I just want to yeah. honor you in that. Yo. I want to honor you. It's a, it's a reflection. <laughs> it's a reflection. It's, it's, it's a reflection. Black it's a reflection. on both sides, buddy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, and look, have a blessed day, and you I will too, catch man. you soon. You too, bro. Talk soon. All right. Bye, guys. Peace. Okay, cool. That was great.